I actually do stream RC, oh, sorry, not RC cars, uh, video games at this time of day on a Friday. But um, today we're going to be doing something a bit different because I had a couple of parcels arrive. So this is not what I'm building, um, but this is one of the things that arrived, which is a new AMG Mini Z, which um, is actually one of my favorite cars. Uh, I used to play uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit a lot, um, and this was my favorite car in the entire series. So um, glad they finally released one and it looks magnificent. Um, it's actually really, really difficult to photograph. Um, I actually have one camera, so uh, let me just bump around that contrast a bit. Yeah, I can't do it. Um, the greys don't photograph well, and this is illuminated quite a bit, and it still looks very, very dark, but that's fine. We'll move on for now. Um, the other thing that ended up arriving, and this is probably gonna be the thing that interests people the most, um, is I had the GLD arrive. So I'm looking forward to building this. Um, I had a quick look at the kit and I've already read the instructions. It looks like it'll be a very, very quick build as well. A lot faster than the, um, the DRZ V2, but we'll find out when I start building it. So I'm actually gonna launch this project tomorrow um, and we'll see how that goes. Hopefully I can get that done in about three or four hours and just do it in one stream. Other than the, ten, oh, in, in contrast to the 10 hours it took to build um, the DRZ V2. Having a look at the parts quality so far, um, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, so just stream maintenance. Uh, Twitch.blitz.works. Awesome. Okay, so let's get on to the project. Um, I did want to show off a couple of things. So I did do some work on the 4x4. Um, the camera's unfortunately at a bit of a bad angle, and that's for various reasons. That's a bit better. Once again, the light's a bit hard. Oh, that's a bit better. I've got a, a light over there. Uh, so you can see it's actively dampened. At the moment, I've just um, blue tacked some stuff, some accessories on. Just really adds a bit more color to the yellow, which is a bit plain. And I did put some stickers uh, around the body. Um, I did want to get some numbers on there, but they look very, very plain. So the color um, on the back at least helps. I've got to work out what we do on the front. Um, I'd very much like to do a uh, front panel in the Atashi style and um, black and white, just to try and break up the color a bit. Um, but we'll see how it goes. So this one's actually got uh, wheel weights in it. Um, the Basically anything from extra racing is actually on this car. So um, very, very stable. And as you can see, Unlike most of the ones online, it just plants itself, it doesn't bounce. And you can even see some hot glue up the front there. And of course I do have the lights, which look really, really nice. So they're a nice touch. Uh, made a bit of a mistake on that light. Um, it's not that it's blinking, that's just a camera. Uh, that one's actually a bit dimmer because um, I'm screwed up the placement. Uh, hey Jibleth, how's it going? So let's move on to the main event. I want to show off perhaps one of my favorite cars. I refer to this as the, the pink Hummer for obvious reasons. And wow, does the camera really blow out the pink. It's not nearly that pink in real life. Um, so this uses a Gecko 2.4 frame, and this is what I'm going to be building today. Um, I've actually done some upgrades to it and simplified the electronics. There's now a lot less on here than there was before. And I also put these body plates on it. But uh, this is an absolutely incredible, if not well-known frame. A um, bit pricey, but the performance you get out of this is incredible. One of the interesting things you might notice is that the tires look very, very similar to that uh, yellow one I showed earlier. Um, I normally just, I've got a whole lot of these tires on hand from Auto RC. And what I tend to find is that these tires slip over the uh, other models' wheels in this scale. And so if I find they've got really, really bad rubber tires, I normally just slip these over the top to make things a bit better and, and grip a lot better. Um, and they're phenomenal tires. Um, I do have an issue. I've actually stripped that uh, screw out there. So I'm gonna have to pull that off and replace it. But um, generally this is, a, this is a pretty awesome vehicle. It actually outperforms a mini uh, Z4x4. So um, super happy with it. Um, and these wheel weights. So these are the wheels, which are actually true bead locks. Um, They've got a lot of copper there, uh, or brass. They weigh an absolute ton. Um, I can't actually find where my scales are, but that's because everything's a bit in a bit of a mess and in a bit of a transition at the moment. So what we're actually going to be doing is building that frame without the uh, the body 
on the top or the uh, I guess you call it the undershell or whatever uh, in preparation for building a rally truck um, the rally trucks going to be pretty large so the mini z's were about well, about that long this is probably going to be about that long um, it's going to be significantly longer so these are the uh, the trucks that um, provide service in like uh, the Dakar rally and that sort of thing and I've been wanting to build one of these for a while in fact while we're, while I'm talking I'm going to start pulling the parts out um, and originally that pink hummer was going to become the body for that um, but then I just like the pink hummer that much uh, this is an interesting tool actually this is a ceramic knife it's just got a really small nub on the end there but the uh, thing I like about it is it just opens packets really really well actually it didn't that time but you only have to lightly drag and it cuts packets open like crazy um, if you're opening a whole bunch of plastic containers like this this is so much better than a scalpel it's not funny you don't even have to drag hard you just have to drag really really lightly and it slices open and the best bit is I can run it across my finger and it doesn't cut it. Um, well, at least I'm not pushing hard enough to cut it. So that's really, really, really awesome. It means a lot less blood. And the last thing I need is more blood in my hands. And of course, I'm saying that as a joke, but you get the point. So that's the rear axle. We'll pop you out as well. The interesting thing about this model is, um, as I said, it's not very well known. Uh, it performs incredibly um great for modding as well oh, there we go that's going pretty smoothly um yeah great for modding great performance uh no build instructions <laughs> um but only uses two screw sizes so it turns out building this platform is actually relatively simple um if you just have a think about how everything goes together it's not particularly difficult to assemble uh, so that is suspension. I'm gonna leave that. I think I might work on this one. So these are the original frame rails, um, and these are oh, if it's on camera the longer frame rails. So these are 86 mil long, and so we'd be doubling that. So 886, uh, about 174 roughly. And then there's also the center part, which adds even more distance. So I think I'm over. It was two centimeters last time I measured it. So it's about 19 centimeters long, which is massive. But then again, these rally trucks are massive. And I want to try and be as true to scale as possible. Um, I also did get some tools. I don't know why. I actually, To be honest, I can't remember if I actually ordered these tools or if they were given to me as a bonus. Um, thanks to Tiny, uh, Tiny Forex 4 for um, the stickers and such. I've got a couple of good uses for them so yeah. oh yeah yeah trust me don't just order one ceramic cutting tool order like five um they, they only cost like two dollars but i just leave them everywhere um they I, I use these to open packages they're great um and i'm not going to say they're kid safe but you can worry a lot less if you've got children and you've got them around okay so that's actually 3d printed onto a hex that's actually kind of cool um, I'm guessing that bit just probably rotates out the back or something but that's actually not bad it looks cheap and it feels cheap but it also feels very very solid um, put that aside for now frame rails and suspension will open you but more importantly you've got screws so the reason I chose this project is I don't want to spend a lot of time streaming tonight but I decided I did want to stream because I've got Unfortunately, this seems to be release season for RC cars, and so I've got a lot arriving all at once. How we can do that? Does that slot in? Or... Yeah. Uh, and so I want to start making progress, and basically, because my channel's been going ballistic at the moment, uh, I want to kind of maintain the momentum, so um, I want to get the... That's why we'll be doing the GLD tomorrow, because I want to get that out the door, as, or the build video for that out the door as soon as possible. Um, which would be great. Okay, we're just just about ten minutes in. Hopefully, I can get this built in about an hour from now. Uh, we'll see if that actually happens. But generally, these are pretty quick things to do. So, mm, wow, this frame is really. Well, unless that goes the other way. As I said, there's no build instructions here, so we're going to be doing a lot of test fitting. 
and they ha have made changes. I just haven't quite worked out what those changes are in total yet. Oh wow, the front, it does go upside down. That is really interesting. And actually kind of convenient because then I can drop the entire undercarriage and the, um, the motor in one action without touching the body and the electronics. Smart move. So I'm not using my, well, maybe I could use my famous screwdriver, but we'll, or my favorite screwdriver, but we'll see. So I'll pull out the frame later for comparison with the other one. Um, I think I have to back that off half a turn. There we go. So I'm not going to tighten everything up. I'm just going to let it run loose. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video, um, it's not just because the Dakar trucks are cool, but because there's no, there's not a lot of information online about this chassis. Um, and this chassis makes it incredibly easy to take any sort of RC car that's roughly around the scale you want um, and turn it into a 4x4. Uh, all you need to be able to do is drill into the body uh, from the bottom. So you need like a platform that's made out of plastic. In fact, the, the body on that Hummer I, was actually just a 3D printed one. Um, and then you just screw these uh, into the bottom. Um, you only need four of them. There's all uh, positions for you to screw them in. And bam, you've got yourself a uh, working 4x4. Okay, so now this frame rail is in, I extend it to the max because this is going to be a massive vehicle. You don't have to tighten it too much, just finger tight. Um, these screws are better than most of the screws I've used in other models. Definitely better than the Orlandos, which I strip those screws out like crazy when I'm not even applying pressure. Um, so, I mean, you can already start to see how big it, big this is going to be. Uh, I'll bring that. So here is a Mini Z 4x4, and it's the total length of the car. Oh, man, camera angles really suck today. Just take my word for it. <laughs> oh, actually, you know what I can do? That's probably easier. Oh, it may appear slightly longer but uh tip to tip it, it's identical in length and so compared to that's a 1 18th scale this is a 1 28th scale so you can see it hangs out by that frame post in front and we will actually be doing tricks to make this even longer so um on the trucks there's normally like a giant is that right? Right, somewhere around uh, a giant truck body on the back, well not truck body, um, like a uh, cargo carrier. And we'll actually have that hanging over the edge. So that'll make it longer. And then the cabin will actually sit forward of the wheels. So that'll add another couple of centimeters. So honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if this is going to be 20 centimeters tip to tip in the end. Um, and I'm trying to make this a high performance, high speed, like rally vehicle. Uh, so I did some research online last night about how much uh, suspension compression there is, uh, sorry, how much travel, what the suspension looks like, uh, how much droop and that sort of thing. And um, the default settings for this chassis uh, seem to line up with pretty well um, at a pretty close to scale. So. A classic example of that is the uh, Red Bull Dakar truck it has about 30 centimeters of travel and I eyeballed the uh, the travel on the actual tire itself just from a couple of videos and then I, I compared the same travel on the uh, the wheels I've got here and it looked identical so that's a good sign although when you tend to scale these things down you tend to also need to improve the the suspension and give it a bit more travel just because um, if you scale small boulders and things down they're actually incredibly tiny uh, to the point where they don't actually present a challenge and so um, yeah you, you just have to cheat basically the smaller you get uh, with like the tiny 187 scale cars which are about that big like a grain of sand actually presents a challenge and so if you do if you were doing scale suspension uh, and so you actually have to give it like 300 times more suspension just so, so that it can get over a tiny bit of sand on the um whatever you, surface you're driving on so 
that's looking pretty good and fairly long. Um, the aluminium frames are definitely a step up from uh, the version 3 that I've got. And this metal part here, which the motor attaches to, is definitely uh, a lot sharper uh, in terms of definition. So like the uh, the CNC on it is a lot, sh a lot sharper. It's probably not going to make a lot of sense to most people, but that's fine. Okay, so I need more screws. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, I don't even have to think with these ceramic knives. They just slice through um, anything like uh, butter. Including butter. Uh, okay, I need some more screws. Okay, I did get two axles, that's good. Um, I might actually start adding some stability. Oh, actually. Oh yeah, that's that's really, really strong. And I can feel the entire chassis vibrate when it does that, so it's like a tuning fork. It's um, really, really, really good. So that's that. Let's grab one of you. Check you onto that. Now, how are we going to attach? Oh, actually, I was doing that, wasn't I? So we'll put you through, and then feed you through the other side, and then screw. Just get it okay, your surfaces are touching. So I normally use, I've got a couple of spare ones of these, uh, and I normally use them to mount the servo. So on the, uh, the pink Hummer, actually, um, the servo is only held in by friction. I've literally just got a screw drilled, applying pressure on one side, and the frame rail supporting it underneath. And that's been sufficient for all the steering. Um, I actually put some washers on the drive line. So if you have a look at this, uh, let me just get the lighting right because it's black on black. So if you have a look here, you can see a bit of the ball head. What happens is that un when you're turning, the ball head moves back and forward. And if you're applying force uh, with the servo, so it's going back and forward, Oh, like that, difficult to grasp, like that, uh, it ends up, this ends up twisting, and so you get a massive dead zone in the steering. So I actually found you can take uh, mini Z shims and just put them underneath, um, or between the, uh, the uh, ball cap and the actual ball itself, uh, so it can't twist back and forward, and that significantly improves the, uh, the response of the steering, and the amount of strength you can put into the steering. Um, so that was a rather nice win. I'm actually just using the uh, the spaces from the suspension block on the MRO3. So there's a couple, there's two little clips, uh, one on each side, um, and it turns out they just snap in from the side and they're a perfect fit. So once this frame is taut, it will be a lot easier to work with. Although I'm not even screwing everything in tightly, and this is so rock solid, it's not funny. Um, I'll have to back everything off as well, and just make sure there's no twist in the frame. But I just want to get all the pieces in place to start with, so that's looking good. I've got a couple of holes here, so we can actually choose um, where the wheel is. I'm going to set the wheel back and forward as um, much as possible, because... That's just the look I'm going for. Um, so these are the body mounts. You can see there's a, a U-shape there for one of these screws to slide in. And then there's a ball joint that connects the, uh, the bottom of um, the, the wheels hook up to. So uh, Now there's, from memory, these get screwed from the inside in. There we go. So this might present a bit of a challenge, but we'll go in at an angle, that's fine. And I'll go in from the back. There you go, don't force it. Everything's sliding in super, th super smooth, there's no real, um, I'm not having to force anything. And I mean, th this is a, it may look, well, it's hard to tell on, on the video, but this is actually a fully uh, machine CNC frame, so very, very tough as well. Uh, 
been very, very happy with the Audio RC products. Um, everything they make is very, very simple. Um, and I took that as not being sophisticated. And I was looking for all these features that all the other frames had. And it turns out that if you just do it right in the first place, you actually don't need a lot of that stuff. I would like to see some portal axles on this just to increase um or two reasons actually um one is to give it a bit more clearance underneath but the primary reason i want portal axles on this is further redu reduction of the drivetrain because i i am using um, a brushed motor currently on my 4x4s but i'd actually like to make this brushless and i oh actually you know what i should go explain why that is so the mini mini z 4x4 is often praised because there's not a lot like it um, you can use motor braking however if the motor is off it requires quite a bit of force so hopefully you can hear that i'm just trying to yeah the volume levels are good so that's actually requiring quite a bit of force and the car actually it does go downhill a bit but it comes to a stop pretty quickly this car on the other hand, and I will have to elevate that side, but um, this one, like, I can push it, and it keeps on going under its own pressure, so um, there's a lot less resistance in this drivetrain, and if I go brushless, there'll be even less. The problem with brushless, um, in this particular instance, is that the KV is so much higher than the brush motors because the brush motors I'm using are N20s and do I have a spare N20? So this is an N20 motor. Um, you can see it's got a reduction drive in the middle. I think this is about uh, 50 to 1 reduction. Um, so the raw motor is just as fast as the brushless but this reduction stage means that the final output speed is probably about 250 RPM, I think that's what I'm using, or 300 RPM. So I've got to actually build a re reduction gearbox for the brushless just to get it down to the same speed. But if I'm using portal axles, then I can do a like a 5 to 1 reduction in the wheels themselves. And because there's less torque than acting on the drivetrain, I get less um, uh, torque. Uh, right, it's not torque steer, but you know, the torque flex, um, under acceleration, that sort of thing. Uh, so that could be a good feature. I mean, I'm actually making great progress on this frame. Um, it may not seem like it, but for the raw frame, we're almost done. Which is why I love these uh, Gecko 2 4 frames. It's like, it's been probably the best and the quickest build I've ever done. Um, and I thought it was really, really simple, but... You literally just chuck a servo on, you chuck a receiver on, you chuck a motor with an ESC on, and you're done. Um, and actually, one of the things I did do with yesterday, actually, with the, um, the pink Hummer, was I swapped, so I, I had a B2B trike from SD Racing, and I had a really, really bad ESC that didn't have a lot of low-end speed control, and I ended up putting the uh, SD Racing um, ESC on there, and wow, did that uh, that fix a lot. So I could now suddenly go from forward to brake uh, a lot faster and forward to reverse uh, a lot faster, which turns out that's important when building a climber. Um, I didn't quite realize it, but after I did, I realized how important that was. Um, and I, I just got a lot of low end speed control so I could actually move the vehicle even slower, which was great. Actually, I'm just going to thread the screw on so it peeks through the other side, but I just need to make sure that, yeah, I don't think that screw's actually in straight, which is why. Let's back it out a bit and apply a bit of pressure. I'm having to make some pretty ha complex hand maneuvers, uh, hand movements here, so that's why you're not going to see everything on camera. And I've probably got the camera on m a bit too moody now that I think about it. Um, with the blacks being a bit too black without definition, but I can't really fix that at the moment without looking into uh, color spaces and lookup tables and 
basically looking at the dynamic range and trying to compress it a lot. Because I've got black on white, um, it turns out I need a lot of colors to represent that. Whereas if I had colors that were closer together, so like a darker surface, um, I can sort of cheat them with the colors and then you can see more of the details in the black. But um, I'm not going to get into that because I'm still very, very new to it and I don't really want to say something wrong that leads people astray. Okay, so that frame's looking good. Um, we'll now start working on the bottom suspension. That's the other thing I love about these ceramic cutters is you can literally start opening packages like this with a single hand. Um, it's really, really nice. I've actually got to remember how this goes together. Uh, that goes on top. Yep, so you get screwed up here, I believe. So there's multiple mounting holes here, and I'm not sure if it's for the cross braces or if it's for this. So just quickly take a look at what else I've got. More screws, lots of servo mounts, which is good. Ah, and double-sided tape. Now, double-sided tape I really appreciate. Okay, so we're just going to select one of the holes at random and just use that. It doesn't really matter if we get it wrong because this frame is so easy to fix up um, and modify that, like, normally I don't even disassemble anything. I just, um, just undo this. I've got a lot of access to the, the chassis, basically, and I can leave the body intact while I'm making changes to the uh, frame geometry. This is a bit harder. Uh, this particular spot, but once you've got one in, should be simpler. Oh, that's interesting. Why aren't you? Are you ball cups? No, you might. Do you actually need a longer screw? Maybe you do. Is there such thing as a longer screw here? Not really. Let's just try and pre thread the part. Ah, oh, you know what? These go from the inside, don't they? Yep, that'll make a lot of sense. So these are, are smooth on the inside, they're not threaded, so it allows it to go back and forward easily. That makes a lot more sense. You don't want to do them up too tight, you just want to get it located and... Oh, hello, why aren't you... Maybe you don't go there, maybe you go there. No, okay, that's interesting. So we're gonna have to work out what the situation is with that. How far does that stick through? Barely anything. So I don't know what goes on these, but what we're gonna do is keep on moving. So we're gonna get the lower control arms into place. Probably not the best idea to do them at this stage, but um, that's fine. It does allow me to do some measuring, so. In fact, we might even move on to tires because the tires for this are a bit interesting. As I said, they're true bead locks, um, which is pretty unusual for this scale. Now you might see it for the the SEX twenty four, the is it the SEX twenty four, and um, those other twenty four scales you can get bead locks, but once it goes smaller, bead locks are actually pretty difficult to find. So let's just open this packet, making sure not to slice the wheels open. But I did buy a whole lot of extra tires because, as I said, I keep them around. I also do have the smaller versions. Yeah, that's a bit hard to compare sizes there, but maybe if I do that. Um, I, um, I've been think, play, toying with the idea of using smaller tires on the Hummer and, and then um, making it lower to the ground. So, um, Getting these wheel weights on and off is not the easiest, but they don't need to come off. Um, just push them through the center like that. So they're just sitting like that and then start peeling up the side over the edge and once it's in like that just rotate it 
There you go. And then you can see it's got a bead. Can you? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. You can see it's got a bit of a bead. And we want the um, the black bit sitting on top of that. So um, you have to pull it back. And it's actually easy to do upside down because then the, the black part just falls down naturally. And then just pull it around the edge. And I'll show you what that looks like in a sec. The other thing is if you pull it to the edge of the black thing, it'll actually lift it up for you. So you can see like that. Now I've just got to get it underneath. There's nothing particularly difficult that requires a lot of accuracy here. It's um, Everything sort of just falls into place, um, which was a bit unusual when I first tried to do it. I'm just not used to that happening. It's like I'm so used to having to file something down or leave or something or apply, leave uh, some tool in a very, very specific manner. But uh, given that this has no manual with it, um, it's kind of nice. Uh, there's nothing special about it. If I do it from the top. Okay. Pop it up. Yep. And then we go on. Um, maybe I will have to. It's a bit. Because, because these uh, black plates normally sit flush with the, um, the brass, it can be a bit difficult to pull them in and out. But I do want to pull one. I'm going to pop these up for a sec. Okay. So the smaller brass weights um, actually have an inside and an outside. Uh, the 32mm ones do not appear to. They're just universal ones. Now the beadlock, you don't actually secure the beadlock on the beadlock itself. Um, the screw that attaches these to the wheel there will actually cause everything to compress. So let me see if I can pull that down a bit. Here I was thinking this was going to be simple. Lesson learned. Actually going to pull back a lot more, I think, onto the brass. There we go. It's probably actually easier to do the outside first rather than the inside. Um, that might be part of the mistake I've made. Go. Perfect. Okay, and I've just put the um, the uh, hex wrench on the, the corner to prevent it going back down. And we just start bringing that back in. And once we've got it under on one side, you only just normally have to apply like I was going to say, light pressure and it pops in, but obviously it did exactly what I didn't want it to do. Um, uh, so where we're at, we're at 33 minutes, so this is taking longer than I thought it would. Maybe it's going to take an hour. It's 8.30 at the moment here. I was hoping to relax and watch some videos, but maybe that won't be happening tonight. Let's grab one of the ultra, ultra tiny uh, hexes or allen keys. Just leave, use it to leverage everything open a bit. And then we, we actually, I'm going to just put it over the edge like that and hold it in and then bring everything back. Is that going to work? Please tell me that's going to work. That's right, I wanted to drop that. Oh, I actually do remember these being a pain, so... I could just steal the wheels from the, uh, the Hummer, to be honest. But I still need to repair that. Actually, while we're here, let's just take a quick look at the Hummer frame. So I'm just trying to work out how everything goes together. How did I secure that? That was from the outside in. They're in nearly the same place. Oh, don't tell me I've those frame. Let's 
so I just need to make sure I've got the topology right. Yeah, I've screwed this up. So these actually have to go back one hole and then these go on the inside there. So no biggie, we can fix that. Um, yep, okay. That's an easy fix. So we're gonna go back to that now that I've worked it all out. Uh, the fun of working with no instructions. So I normally don't like undoing things like this because every time you take a screw in and out, it damages the thread ever so slightly. So I'm just doing this by hand so I can grasp it. Could be using tweezers, but there's not a. It's just large enough that I don't need need to. I I can already see the thread, so this is looking a lot better. Just slightly, lightly screwed in, no real force. Um, so I've taken uh, this frame out outdoors and actually into mud, and it's actually pretty dirt resistant. Dirt does build up, but the frame is simple enough that it doesn't actually cause any real performance loss. Um, I think for this one, I actually will be putting some grease in the axles to prevent water getting in. Um, but I haven't on the, uh, the Hummer and it hasn't really been an issue. But I do have an appreciation of uh, dust all over the place on that thing. So, But uh, that's why I keep a toothbrush in my RC mobile kit because it is one of the better cleaning tools for this scale. Okay, that's looking good. Now that gets from the inside out. Push it through first, just makes dropping it in easier. And this does have a ball head on it, so you have to make sure that's facing down. in, screwing up, oh, there we go, okay, other side, so I'm really liking the length of this frame, um, I'm really liking like, the strength and the quality, so it's definitely a step up from the V3, but what interests me most of about the V4 over the V3 is that uh, on the V4, the front and rear shafts rotate in different directions. And that doesn't seem all that important, but what it does mean is that the, uh, the torque of the front and the rear wheels it counteracts each other, um, and so you get less uh, body roll under uh, power. Back that off, there we go. Um, but more importantly, it allows you to put two of these uh, steering setups, one at the front and one back, and get four wheel, dry, uh, four wheel steering. So I do have another one of these on order. Not cheap, unfortunately. Um, but when I do, this will actually steer at the front and the back. Now, the, uh, the rally trucks normally don't have that. Um, that was just something I wanted to add. I did want it on the, uh, the Hummer. I was really, really disappointed when I worked out that you can't do that with a V3 frame. Um, and I contacted a couple of people on how to reverse, like how to disassemble the uh, the front steering setup, and it turns out that no one knows, and or no one would get back to me about that. So, um, okay. So yeah, on the Hummer, which is a shorter wheelbase, that would have been wonderful. Um, especially in the, for rock climbing, which is what I intend to use the Hummer for and what I do use the Hummer for. This one's going to be an off-road, um, very, very bad terrain at high speed type vehicle. So hence, I'm going to be putting a lot of effort into uh, steering geometry and suspension, um, weight and weight distribution. 
Whereas with uh, 4x4 crawlers, you really don't really have to worry about any of that stuff at all. And I'll be putting a, a, like a big, massive battery in this thing. Um, even the small batteries, I think I can get like an hour's runtime, but um, it'd be nice if I could get like two hours off a single charge on the, uh, the rally truck. But I think it's going to be, I don't want, I could cheat and make it very, very ultra lightweight, but um, I might even try and make it scale as close to scale weight that makes it look and behave the same as I can. So you don't just, like if this is 130 scale, you don't just take the weight down by 30. Um, oh, sorry, I'm not going to just take the weight down by 30, which is normally what you would do. Um, I'm going to um, experiment with how the body rolls and the dynamics of the car and change the battery around based on that. Or I should say select the battery. What I'll actually do is use a smaller battery and some body weights to work out what the optimal battery weight is and then put that in. Um, and as far as I'm aware, there's not like the the rally truck kits are incredibly rare. Um, or the, I don't think there are any rally truck kits, but there's very there's some in the 124th scale where people have just modified an SCX24. In fact, I put that in upside down. Um, which is all good and everything, but they tend to be a really, really wide wheelbase. It, it just doesn't look like a rally truck. It, lo it looks like someone's taken a, a very small truck body and just put it on top of a very, very large frame. It, it looks comical, if anything. Um, with this, I'm going to be actually trying to print a... Uh, a truck body, a 3D design and print a truck body. Um, I've been toying around with body shapes and that sort of thing. So it's going to look somewhat like the uh, the Red Bull rally truck, but I've got some, I've made some deliberate design decisions in some areas that make it look very, very different. Okay, that's a bit too tight. Let's back that out for half a turn. Perfect, so that's looking good. Uh, good order Ansible and wikis. Okay, so now what do we want to do? Uh, I could talk, look at the motor. So the nice thing about this frame is that this is the other way around. So this top surface is totally flat. Before there used to be a bump in the middle, which I had to route around. Um, and I've also got an N30 motor, which is a slightly longer version of the N20 I showed you, but with a lot more torque. And I'll be interested to see how that performs. Um, let's install some suspension now. Now, this is a... not the suspension it comes with, but I played with this suspension the other day and converted the, um, the Hummer over to it. And wow, does it perform well. So these come pre-greased. These have a spring inside them. So they're full damper springs. And you can just twist the top um, and put more in there. Um, I'm going to resist the urge to open them because they're pristine at the moment. And as soon as you open them, you have to re-grease them. They're, they also take up a lot less... Um, uh, space along the chassis uh, and are also a lot higher so these get as much um, travel as the uh, the long extended suspension setup you can get for this vehicle um, which is nice because uh, this chassis and so this design I'm building is all going to be about the uh, suspension travel like um, it's designed to hit obstacles at speed and I want to have a lot of droop so most of the time the suspension is going to be compressed, but when it gets any air, I want the wheels to drop as quickly as possible. Great, now I have to line this up, don't I? Uh, we're just going to do a quick test fit. It goes in the center. Um, we, yeah, we, we want the wheels to drop as quickly as possible uh, and touch the ground because we want to A, have the wheels on the ground for as long as possible. But when the wheels are on the ground and the body's coming down, that means we can actively push back against the body. And why is that important? I'm trying to think why that's important. It's, it's probably not actually. Um, it just makes it look a, a bit more like the actual rally trucks themselves. So actually, I'm just going to uh, 
that's problem number one. It's not straight. I didn't thread it through straight. Back that out a bit. It's uh, actually kind of funny. All the plastic parts on this are 3D printed. So you've got these nice, beautifully machined CNC parts, and then you've got a whole lot of um, 3D printed plastic. Which, I mean, if you're doing small-scale manufacture, is actually not that bad. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised at how uh, the quality of the 3D printed parts um, and just how strong they are. Cool, we're in. I realize I should be keeping an eye on where my hands are on the camera so you can see a bit more. But hopefully you're here for the chatter. Well, of course I'm watching IRC. I'm currently watching seven different channels at once. In fact, I've actually still got screen real estate. Like those are dual ultra wide monitors are um, an absolute lifesaver for things like this. Cause I can have four windows and four to three at um, the equivalent of like a 19 inch. It's like having four 19 inch monitors essentially. Or maybe even more actually. It's been a long time since I used a 19 inch monitor. Okay. So this frame is starting to come together. Let's take a look at it now. You can see the suspension mounts. They're not, they look a bit more crooked than they actually are. But that's because I've got the focus very, very tight. So even like half a mil looks like half a mile with all the angles involved. Get a better recording setup, I think, for this sort of thing. Normally, I'd use the um, the RC mat or the area where I've got the uh, RC mount mat, but at the moment, I've got some other projects ongoing there. So it's always been a big issue with uh, me doing projects is that I've normally got a couple in flight and packing them up means you can quite easily lose parts. Okay, so I'm definitely satisfied with the overall length. I still don't know if it's going to be accurate scale-wise. I did the math and the scale came out to roughly 1 30th. Um, but that was for the 168 Oh no, 170 whatever for the frame. Um, with the body overhang, and that wasn't counting the bit in the middle. So I think all once it's all done, I am probably still looking at we're taking seven meters, 7.2 meters down to say 20, 20 centimeters. And I don't have a calculator to do the math, and I can't do that in my head, which I'm but um, that should be about 128th scale. Which would be perfect if it is, because then it's the correct scale for the Mini Z cars as well. Although if it's 124, I don't really, really mind. Although 124 scale uh, classically for like the SCX24 and all the other cars that are really, really popular at the moment that are mainly plastic and mainly from the US. Funny enough, this is from China and it's all steel um, and CNC'd. Um, yeah, the, the, they're not, they don't really respect the scale properly uh, in the 124th size. Okay, so what do we do? We can now put the suspension on, but we're going to wait and do that. Got the up and the lower. So I can actually just put that on now, I think. Yeah, I can. Um, so there's no real front to this frame. Um, so I'm just going to pick this as the front. Yes, it's all ball head, so we have to stick that, up, stick the top one on first. Trust me, it'll save you later. And then you've got the control arms or linkages. And they have to be rotated slightly, I think. I must admit, I find really weird that I have to do that. But that's fine. Oops. 
Yeah, I forgot. Be careful. These do require a bit of pressure. So I've got to be careful not to bend any plastic parts. Although you should know by now that I uh, I keep stuff spare and in stock, so it's not the end of the world if I have to replace something. Oh god, I, I love that this frame is there. We go. Uh, all uh, only two different types of screws. Well, not even two types of screws. It's it's a ball heads and then one type of screw. And that just makes it so simple. Okay, and then we stick that to the bottom. Ball heads have a tendency to try and twist when you're putting them together. So getting everything dead center before you apply pressure really helps. Oh, really, really struggling to get this. It's a lot of complex maneuvers, and like trying to keep it in camera is. Um, I'm not even keeping an eye on the camera, unfortunately, but uh, just like keeping it in shot while I'm doing this is a bit difficult. It's a lot easier if it's pressed up against my body, but I don't kind of have that luxury when I'm streaming, so. There we go. So we can see it like bouncing around. Got the control arm to move it left and right. Oh, these are brass now. Interesting. Cool. Um, let's do the rear. Which will be, as I said, in the near future, um, four wheel steering. So that means we're going to need a servo at the front and the back. Um, you can bolt the servo to the uh, these parts, or you can bolt it to the chassis. Um, I'm going to be bolting mine to the chassis, just to because for I've been going on about the suspension quite a bit. Um, I'm going to have less weight on the suspension just so it can travel quicker um, and more easily. So I might have to install a pan hard bar, which is a, um, a bar that just goes from the, uh, the, the, the axle to the body, just an angle from like that, and just prevents it going from side, side to side. I mean, this is a pretty rigid body anyway, but on the front, um, there used to be enough flex. Maybe, actually, maybe that's not an issue with this one. You know what? This is so much stiffer than the, the Hummer, it's not funny. Um, if that's the case, maybe I don't need a pan hard... Oh, sorry, a pan hard bar. Uh, I tried to build one last night for the Hummer with the paper clip and that worked. Um, wasn't the easiest thing to do and it wasn't the most accurate, so I'm going to probably redo it. There we go. So I've got the rear. So if I could get that all that travel I'd be happy but we're likely going to get more like that uh, ring finger uh, more like that's probably a better way so you can see it on the shock so gold part disappears which I think is just over a centimeter um, and that's going to be sufficient so when I was looking at the red ball stuff um, I went from about the inside of the rim to the top of the tire and if you have a look at that it's about the same on the shock. So scale wise, this does seem pretty good. Uh, in fact, you should be actually be attaching the, uh, the shocks to the, um, the axles and then pushing them onto the top. It just gives you a bit more freedom in movement. One of the other nice things about this kit is they give you so many extra screws. Um, and the screws are, they're not, the best screws I've ever used, um, but they're definitely above average. So they're no titanium screw, but given that this is metal on metal, I don't know if I'd really want to be using titanium. I'd rather have softer screws and a lot of them so I can swap them out uh, rather than damaging the frame. And that seems to be the approach that I've gone with here. Oh, there we go. 
And now it should be a simple affair to pop that into the top. Why did I say simple? I cursed it, didn't I? Now the question is, do I try and get these wheels built, or do I just steal them from the Hummer? Because I want to get to the rolling chassis stage. So, here's one of the other things. I need to make sure that I've got... Uh, yep, and then... Okay, that works. So I put the drive shaft in, I just want to make sure that it fits. Oh yes, and actually I can push it all the way in and it still doesn't fall out. So I'll end up epoxying that, um, which is how I did it previously. As you can see, it just rotates uselessly otherwise. I just quickly want to check if that's got any holes pre-drilled into it, because previously you could pin it. And it looks like these ones do not pin. So let's put that through there. Okay, so yeah, that's why. Um, how do I? Okay, that one came out. So I'm just going to call this a test fit. I'm not going to leave them in. Um, oh, that's going to be a much tighter fit. But oh yeah, that one works as well. So these are. This is looking pretty good. We we'll just double check the shocks work. That is awesome. My house is going to smell like epoxy tomorrow. Which you either love it or hate it, but I, considering it's normally associated with model builds, I always think of it as a glorious smell. Maybe I can do something with these extra springs. So these are the springs that came with it. And there's still a, a bit of a question as to how much suspension I need. So, like, do I need additional damping? Um, that sort of thing. I'm just trying to think. Honestly, this frame's almost done. <laughs> We've just got the wheels and then that's it. Um, in the interests of keeping this short and sane, we're going to do two things. Cool. We're going to steal the wheels. And then we're going to do a comparison of the, the frame. Just in terms of total length. And yeah, so the nice thing about this um, chassis is the N30 motors, which will give you more torque. They're basically longer. I actually had a bit of trouble tracking them down with my usual parts sources, but I did manage to find some on eBay, so I just ordered them. Um, should make things a lot more torquey. So if we have a look at that. Um, you can just see how much extra space there is here. Like, I'm pretty sure that's one, yeah, it's one extra wheel. Um, in terms of wheelbase, uh, so those wheels are aligned. Okay, yeah. So it's probably one and a third of the wheel. And then once we add in stuff going over the back and the over the front, we're looking at a vehicle about this long compared to a vehicle of... The black really does not help at all that long. So go from that to about that. So this is going to be a very, very long vehicle, but it, it's a truck, I mean, it's supposed to. Uh, yeah, and that's the uh, suspension setup. As you can see, it's just gray. And on the bottom, you can see the motor and the, the bottom looks very, very similar. So um, yeah, let's get this up on some wheels. And then one, two, three, four, that goes there. These do have the wheel weights in them. So we're at the hour mark and I spent probably about 10 minutes screwing around at the beginning. So this frame is ready to put a body and electronics on in less than an hour and electronics would take me another half hour 40 minutes it's so stupidly simple it's not funny there we go 
rolling chassis. Um, so this kit is so, so, so fast to build. It's not funny. Get it in initially, then we rotate the wheel because these are slotted. And once it kicks into place, tighten it up. I don't want to over tighten these. Like I've actually found the wheels and the nuts on this don't unscrew. Um, I don't know how they've managed to do it, but I've never felt the need to lock tight or even do the screws up that tightly. Um, the other trick is like I can, because this is going to have a giant truck body on the back, I can just leave the tools in the back of the truck itself and make it carry its own tools around. Which is one of the reasons why I've wanted to do a relic truck for a while. Um, the other interesting thing about the Dakar trucks is they normally carry the tires, their own tires on the back, uh, between two to four. And we will be doing that as well. Are you coming up yet? No, so you need to pop out like that, I think. You have to push the axle around. I think I might have to. So this is just a bit fiddly. In fact, this is the exact same issue I was having on the Hummer. Once it gets depressed on one side. Oh, okay, that's what I've got to have to put my finger there. So if I put that on and then rotate it, that should be sufficient. Oh god, why are you being so annoying? Yeah, 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 bad puns. I wasn't even intending to make that one. Okay, that's coming along nicely. So, we now have a rolling chassis with full damp and suspension. And let me tell you, like, these shocks, absolutely incredible. Um, well, that's probably not good, but say we chuck my phone on there. You can see it go down. Oops. Oh, that fully depresses it. That's probably not the best thing. Uh, I do have a run cam. Actually, you know what will work really, really well? There we go. So that's going up and down. Um, yeah, that's got a bit of bounce in it, but once I've just got to find the right part to be honest, if I put that on there, yeah, doesn't bounce. If I take that on, it wouldn't bounce much, but I'm super happy with that. Like that is, this is going to be an absolutely incredible chassis, a bit of roll, but that's fine. I can always put a sway bar in there. Um, that'll become important because the, the rally trucks have a lot of weight high up. And they will tend to turn over, so I might have to put uh, build a sway bar and put that on. But this um, seems a lot more flexible. Back to the tires, however. So I did tell you I got a lot of these extra tires, and the reason for that is because I will be mounting the tires on the back here, likely roughly like that. Uh, can you I'll show it? And just hanging over the edge there. I might even go for like an entire set, um, or maybe even three will work. Um, just so it looks like the actual rally trucks, and it's kind of cool. Won't put the weights on, um, the wheels that I, I end up carrying, but... Uh, so I'm just seeing if this can stress... Oh. I'd have to take it up. Anyway, I'm happy. Uh, we're going to do electronics video maybe tomorrow, maybe Monday. Not too sure. Um, unless anyone's really got any other questions, I might start thinking about ending the stream. So... Everything is super smooth, like, these frames are expensive, um, don't get me wrong, they are expensive, but they are phenomenal. Um, these would have to probably be best in breed. Um, more on the 128th scale, the 124th scale, people are doing insane things in terms of travel and that sort of thing, but if you're going for a scale look, uh, and you want impressive performance while being scale, this is a chassis you want. And I'm really glad I finally got an all black chassis. So with the, uh, the red highlights. So oh, this is just mind blowingly good. This chassis always makes me smile a lot. So thanks for, there we go. Thanks for joining me. Um, 
hope you have a good one and expect the dear uh, the gld build tomorrow which should hopefully only take me four hours and if it takes me any less than that we'll finish this chassis up tomorrow there won't be in any any body it'll just be electronics but uh, that will allow me to start testing some things. So um, have a good one. Actually, how do I stop the stream? Oh, there we go.